In this video, I will show you how to build a voltage divider in Tinkercad circuits. This is a free online circuit simulator that is great for practicing using a real breadboard, or if you are doing any sort of online teaching or learning, it is much easier to screen share and show Tinkercad than it is to hold a physical breadboard up to a webcam. This is a companion series with multiple virtual labs that you can do in Tinkercad circuits to my intro circuit theory playlist, which you can find on my channel, which goes through all the math and equations for the various circuits. But in this series, we are going to be physically building them on this virtual breadboard. So to start out, the goal or objective of a voltage divider circuit, as the name sort of implies, is to divide or reduce a voltage. So we cannot amplify or increase a voltage with a voltage divider. That's gonna come in much later when we talk about operational amplifiers. But for example, if we have something like a nine volt battery, we can reduce this voltage to something in between zero and nine volts. And we can do that just doing two resistors. That is our simplest voltage divider circuit. And again, if you wanna see the equation for that to get the output voltage as a function of the input voltage and the resistor values, go check out the companion series that I'm going to link in the description of this video. I'm not gonna be redoing all the equations here because I have to hook up, hook up my drawing tablet to do that and it's more annoying to do in Tinkercad and all that. So again, watch that first if you don't know the equation. Here we're gonna talk about building it. I just need to put two resistors in series on my breadboard. And in the last video about resistors in series in parallel, I talked about all the different ways you can do that. The nice thing about Tinkercad is that when you mouse over the holes on the breadboard, it highlights in green which holes are connected. So the number one mistake I see students make when they need to go put two resistors in series on a breadboard is they will do this and go, oh, okay, the resistors are in series and then they'll build the rest of the circuit and be confused why it is not working. And you have to remember that the adjacent rows of the breadboard here are not connected as highlighted by these little green circles here. So even though these resistors are physically or geometrically lined up with each other, they are not electrically connected. They are not electrically in series. If I want them electrically in series, I have, again, pretty much infinite options to reconfigure things on this breadboard. One is to move this one up a row. So these terminals are now in the same row and are electrically connected. Or if you really like how it looks when they're physically lined up like this, you could also use a short jumper wire just to bridge that gap between the two rows. And now they are both physically lined up and electrically in series. So matter of personal preference for a very simple circuit like this where there isn't anything else on the breadboard, it doesn't really matter that much as you build more complicated circuits and things get more crowded. It is gonna matter where you put them. But for our purposes right now, I'm just gonna do this. I have my two resistors in series and I'm gonna change both of these to 10 kilo ohm for starters. So this is going to be a 50-50 voltage divider that divides the voltage in half. So with nine volts in, I would expect 4.5 volts out. And again, I have another video that goes over the equation for how you calculate that output voltage. Next, we are going to connect power to our circuit. We need to connect the input voltage that we want to divide or reduce. So as usual, I'm going to use my breadboard power buses. I have another tutorial that is all about learning to use breadboard and how all the holes are connected and how you can use the buses. But again, we can sort of cheat in Tinkercad because when we mouse over, it shows us that the buses are connected for the entire length of the breadboard as opposed to the rows that are connected horizontally here. So I have connected the positive and negative terminals from my battery pack to the positive and negative power buses. And I could flip this and do the input down here. Normally circuits are built and arranged, at least in textbooks, kind of like how we read top to bottom and left to right. So it's more traditional to have the input to a circuit on the top left and then the output over on the right somewhere. But again, you can't get electrically mixed up with the physical or geometric arrangement of things. I could do that in reverse. I'm just gonna follow convention here and send the input positive voltage to one terminal of my first resistor here. And then I'm gonna connect ground to the other terminal of my second resistor. So you can see I have not connected anything to the junction between these two resistors yet. That is gonna be the output of my circuit that we will measure with a multimeter later. 
So when building a physical circuit, odds are if you're working at an electronics bench in an electronics lab, you will only have one multimeter available. The nice thing about Tinkercad is we can add as many multimeters as we want to see both the input and output of a circuit at the same time. So I'm going to connect one of these very simple multimeters to measure my input voltage. Again, you could watch the other video about how a breadboard works. I have lots of options about where I could connect these wires to measure the input voltage. So I called the input to the circuit, the top terminal of this resistor here. I'm just measuring the input voltage on the power bus, but those are connected directly by a jumper wire. So they are at the same voltage. I could connect this positive multimeter terminal over here and I would measure the same thing. And we see if I start my simulation, I should measure nine volts there and I'm measuring zero volts on the output because I don't have that connected anywhere yet. So it is important when connecting your output measurement that it is referenced to the same ground, which is what we define as zero volts in this circuit. So it's a little trickier. Sometimes I see students make a mistake connecting the multimeter to measure the output voltage in a voltage divider. The output is defined as the terminal where these two resistors are joined relative to ground. So you want to make sure you are measuring the voltage drop over this second resistor and not the first one. So I'm going to connect my negative wire down to ground there. And the positive wire from this multimeter is going to go to that junction between the two resistors. And now when I start the simulation, I should get exactly 4.5 volts out. Because my two resistor values are equal, we can see that if I change one of them, for example, if I change this to 20 kilo ohms and start the simulation again, my output voltage is going to go higher. Now I'm getting two thirds of the input voltage instead of one half of the input voltage. And again, my other video covers the equation that lets you calculate that based on these two resistor values. So a few things to watch out for. Again, watch out for connecting the second multimeter wrong. So for example, if I have my ground lead up there, I'm going to measure a negative voltage because I have my positive and negative reversed. Or if I don't have positive and negative reversed, whoops, but measure the voltage drop over that first resistor, that is fine, but you're not gonna get the right reading if you intended to measure the output voltage of the circuit relative to ground. So you can see here, I am measuring a three volt drop over this first resistor. The rest of it is dropped over the second resistor. Traditionally, or by convention, whatever you wanna call it, the output of a voltage divider is the drop over the second resistor here relative to ground. So if you wanna know the voltage drop over the first resistor for some reason, that's fine and this is how you would connect your multimeter, but that is not the output of the circuit. That is going to be, again, how I had it connected initially with the negative terminal down there at ground and the positive terminal between the two resistors here. The other thing to watch out for, especially when designing these circuits, if you are asked to design one in a lab and for example, build something to reduce nine volts to six volts or nine volts to 4.5 volts, and you look at the resistor values, you might say, hey, the math actually works out the same if instead of 10 kilo ohms and 20 kilo ohms, this is just one kilo ohm and two kilo ohms. So the ratio between them is the same. And if I start the simulation, you see I'm getting the same values out. So I go, okay, that actually works fine. What if I reduce it even further and go down to 100 ohms and 200 ohms and just kind of keep Hey, Tinkercad doesn't want to let me, there we go, 200 ohms and just keep reducing the value but keeping it the same. Am I still going to get six volts out here? And in Tinkercad, you'll notice something that might seem a little strange at first. I'm not no longer getting exactly nine volts at the input. And this is occurring due to two things I cover in other videos. So you might need to go watch those to understand this fully. The first is just Ohm's law. I have a constant voltage. I am decreasing the resistance. So current is going to go up. And the second thing is that this battery has some internal resistance. It's not a perfect ideal voltage source that can just always provide nine volts. It's kind of like having a little resistor in series built into the battery here. So as the current through that resistor increases, the voltage drop over it is going to increase. So I'm getting a voltage drop before I even get out of the battery to the positive terminal here. And since I can't really measure inside the battery when I measure on the buses out here, I'm now seeing a slightly lower voltage. Therefore, my output voltage is now also dropping a little bit and is less than six volts. And this can keep going. Say if I reduce this to 10 and 20 ohms, 
you're going to see this voltage drop starts to get even worse. Now I'm losing almost half a volt. And, well, I've never tried. I don't think Tinkercad will simulate the resistors burning up. But, say, if I drop this down to some very tiny value, like in the milliohm range, in reality, if I was doing this with a physical circuit, I would have dramatically exceeded the power rating of these resistors and they would be smoking right now because this resistance is so small and so much current would be flowing that unless they are extremely highly rated power resistors the little quarter watt resistors you get in most kits for electronic slabs would be toast by now so again even though the ratio between the resistor values is the same and the math works out exactly the same this is why you're going to want to err on the side of larger resistors, usually in the kiloohm range, as a rule of thumb for starters. Because again, math works out the same, but you're not going to have that problem where you are drawing so much current from the battery that both the internal resistance of the battery is a factor and the power limitations of the resistors are going to be a problem. Okay, hopefully having watched that, you are now prepared to go build a voltage divider on a physical breadboard. Again, you might only have one multimeter available, so you would only be able to measure the input and output voltages one at a time. But this video should have demonstrated the basic idea. Remember to check out the rest of this series for some other Tinkercad circuit. circuit yeah. Check out the rest of this series for some other Tinkercad circuit labs. I'm not even going to bother editing that out. And subscribe or just check out the playlist on my channel to see future videos as I add them to the series. Thank you.